Welcome, pilots! This video is part of a series showcasing the use of regular frigates for combat site exploration in EVE Online. If you're a brand new Amar pilot looking for PvE combat against NPC pirates, this video is for you. Or if you're a new Kaldari, Galent, or Minmatar pilot, I've got you covered on this channel as well. If you're a few months into the game and have an Omega clone, you might be interested in my videos on assault frigates. Combat sites can be found on your probe scanner window and are divided into two types. Cosmic anomalies appear in green, and you can warp to them immediately. Cosmic signatures must be scanned down with probes before you can warp to them, and the site will be accessible through an acceleration gate. Brand new pilots start the game with a corvette, the smallest ship available. Within your first hour of play, you'll be looking to get yourself into a frigate. If you haven't yet, I definitely recommend running the Career Agent missions from both the Enforcer and Explorer divisions. My goal with this series is to show that even a new pilot flying a frigate can find success running combat sites. I'll discuss important skills to train, the weapon systems and ship attributes for Amar frigates, and some of the sites you'll be capable of running as a new pilot. If you stay in Amar space, you'll find combat sites against Blood Raiders in the western regions, or Sanchez Nation in the eastern regions. I'm now in the Amar trading hub, ready to fit my first ship for combat site exploration. I ran the first few career agent missions in the Enforcer Division, giving me a free Executioner frigate and just enough ISK to buy the modules for it. I put together a little skill plan for brand new pilots who want to get straight into running combat sites. I've included it on the ship fitting guide on my website over at RileyEntertainment.com. The Air Amar Soldier of Fortune skill plan provided with the game has a lot of overlap, but it's missing energy grid upgrades, which I think is quite important early on. Solely for the purpose of demonstration for this video, I've held off on training any new skills, with the sole exception of getting repair systems to level 2, which was gifted as part of the tutorial. My day one explorer fit is an executioner fit with dual light beam lasers, an afterburner, and an active armor tank. I chose the metal level 2 variation for the beam lasers, due to their low cost on the market. All other active modules are the enduring variation, to help mitigate their impact on the ship's capacitor. This includes the afterburner, sensor booster which will help us lock targets faster, and armor repair. The fit is filled out with a compact capacitor battery to increase how long the armor repair can run, along with a damage control and multi-spectrum coating to improve the ship's armor resistances. It also includes a core probe launcher and eight probes to scan down combat signatures. All energy turrets must be loaded with a frequency crystal. The crystals available operate at an increased damage output as the optimal range goes down. You can switch between crystals quite quickly during combat, so it's to your advantage to bring along a few different variations. I've chosen multi-frequency, which has the highest damage output, radio, which has the highest optimal range, and standard, which is a balance between damage and range with the lowest draw on the ship's capacitor. This fit costs well under a million esk, so it should be within the price range for a brand new pilot. Once you have all the modules and charges, you can fit the ship and you're ready to go. In Amar space, you have access to more combat sites than the other player factions. You can find Blood Raider sites in the western regions, such as Kador or Corazor, or Sanchez Nation sites closer to the Amar system, in Domain or Tash Murkon. There are three combat anomalies for each of these pirate factions that I'll be recommending for new players. The first combat site you'll want to find is the Blood Hideaway, or Sancha Hideaway, which can be found all over Amar space. Unless you walk away from your computer for a while, even a brand new player will be in no danger of losing their ship here. You'll encounter a few waves of corvettes and frigates. The next site you can try out is the Blood Burrow, or Sancha Burrow, which you'll only find in systems with a security status of 0.9 and higher. This is a small step up in difficulty, and the waves will spawn a little further apart. The third site I'll mention is the Blood Refuge, or Sancha Refuge. Like the hideaway, this can be found all over Amar space. For a new player flying a frigate, this can be a significant step up in difficulty. The presence of destroyer NPCs and a light missile battery are what make it challenging. 
If you choose to run refuge sites, I might recommend new players avoiding the variation with the large cargo rig at its center. Each wave here can have up to six ships, so the danger of ship loss for a new player is very real. Sticking to the variation with the two storage silos will make things much more manageable. If you're itching to use your probe launcher, there are two combat signatures I can recommend for new players. Both can only be found in solar systems with a security status of 0.9 or higher. The first is the Old Meanie Cultivation Center. There are quite a few NPCs in here, but they're all corvettes, so the level of difficulty is not as high as you might fear. Watch for NPCs or structures with unique names. They tend to drop special loot called Overseer Effects, which you'll be able to sell to certain NPC corporations for a profit. And the second site is the Sancha equivalent, called the Sancha Military Outpost. This is quite similar to the old Mini, but with Sancha NPCs instead. Most of the other Blood Raider or Sancha's Nation combat sites can be a significant step up in difficulty, due to the presence of destroyers and cruisers. If you're up for the challenge, the Blood Raider Human Farm or the Sancha Acclimatization Facility can be quite the rewarding experience. You'll face ships that hit you with tracking disruptors, which force you to fight at a much closer range. Two other sites that can be a challenge for new players are the Blood or Sancha Hideout or the Blood or Sancha Lookout. Again, these sites can be extremely difficult for new players, so my recommendation is to wait until you have enough ISK to be able to easily replace your ship. After a day or two of accumulating bounty prizes, selling items you loot, or receiving rewards from the Air Career Program, you should have enough ISK to be able to upgrade your ship. The Day 3 Explorer Fit for the Executioner focuses primarily on enhancing damage output by upgrading from dual light beam lasers to focused beam lasers. To achieve this, the Fit introduces an engineering rig named the Small Ancillary Current Router, which increases the available power grid on the ship. I've replaced the multi-spectrum coating with a heatsink, increasing damage further at the slight expense of damage resistances. I've also upgraded the compact capacitor battery to its Tech 2 variant, and included another engineering rig named Small Semiconductor Memory Cell in order to increase the duration the armor repair can run. Another way to eventually achieve better fitting options is through skill training. Advanced Weapon Upgrades reduces the power grid need of all weapon turrets and launchers, but requires weapon upgrades trained to level 4. Or you could train power grid management to level 5. Both of these options take many days worth of skill training. If you make a point of running lots of these sites, eventually something will happen that changes your ability to afford new modules to upgrade your ship. Something along the lines of this armor repair, which dropped in the old Mini Cultivation Center. Dark Blood NPCs, or specially named ships or structures, will sometimes randomly drop some extremely high value items like these. Once you start finding these sort of high value items, you'll probably be thinking about trying out a new ship. The Amar Navy has two other regular frigates that are good choices for new players looking to run combat sites. The first is the Tormentor, which can be fit very similar to an Executioner with two slight changes. It has no utility high power slot, so you'll have to drop the probe launcher, at least during combat. And it has a drone bay with enough bandwidth to field two light drones. The second is the Punisher, which I feel is a stronger choice for running combat anomalies. The Punisher also lacks a utility high power slot. It only has two mid power slots, but offers five low power slots. The ship has a bonus to reduce capacitor usage of small energy turrets, and a bonus to armor resistances. This fit adds a capacitor power relay, which requires energy grid upgrades to be trained to level 2. When combined with the engineering rigs, this fit manages to be fully cap stable. If you don't mind the extra cost and like flying frigates, there's also a special faction frigate called the Imperial Navy Slicer. You can visit the EVE Online section of my website over at RileyEntertainment.com to find all of these example new player fits for Amar frigates. Now that I hopefully have you making plenty of ISK, you'll probably be thinking about trying out whole new classes of ships. Your next step will probably be an Amar destroyer, such as a Corsair, followed by a cruiser, such as an Omen or a Mauler. Most combat site explorers eventually end up in special faction cruisers, such as the Gila or Orthrus. If you like the idea of sticking with Amar ships, the Phantasm is another good option. 
each new step up in ship class is also a significant step up in cost. Running combat sites is a great way of being able to afford it. So far I've been recommending the use of beam lasers rather than pulse lasers. Beam lasers have slightly higher DPS and slightly more range than pulse lasers. The trade-off is that pulse lasers require less CPU and power grid, making them easier to fit, and have much lower capacitor usage, and better tracking. Pulse lasers tend to be a stronger choice for close-range combat against smaller targets, or if you're fitting a ship and finding yourself running out of CPU or power grid. I tend to stick with beam lasers for most PvE situations, especially when flying a frigate or a destroyer, but would consider using pulse lasers when flying a cruiser in combat sites that have lots of frigate or destroyer NPCs. There are many more combat sites to explore than those I've mentioned throughout this video. Once you have the ISK to easily replace your ship, I encourage you to fearlessly try them out for yourself. I just recently completed a 13-part video series detailing every Blood Raider combat site found in high security Amar space. If you ever need a little help running any of these sites, you can check out these videos for full details on what to expect from each encounter. Stay tuned to Riley Entertainment for more EVE Online combat site guides, and smash that like button if you enjoy my content.